Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Orhat and the session we're going to be looking at auditing and reporting requirements under Government Auditing Standard GAS and the Single Audit Act SAA. Now these topics are also covered in my governmental course. So if you're looking at a little bit more details of what I'm going to be covering here, you could go to my governmental playlist and look at Governmental Auditing, Government Auditing Standard Yellow Book and I have a single session about the single audit. In this session, I'm going to combine both sessions together, but if you need a little bit more of detailed information, because this is really a governmental um, a governmental accounting uh, topic rather than auditing, because we don't, we don't really get into the auditing, just basically look at the sources, of the authority sources for these, uh, for these audits. So the primary source of operative literature for doing governmental audit, and what is a governmental audit? Basically, when you audit a government, basically a school district, a county, um, a city, a village, a township, this is a governmental audit. What do you have to follow? You have to follow the government auditing standard, GAS, which is issued, who issued it? The Government Accountability Office, GAO. So basically, think of the GAO as the AICPA, and they issue those, they issue those standards. So for a private, for, for a company, what happened is the AICPA, and here we're not dealing about publicly traded companies, just just private companies. The IICPA is the organization that that issued the rules, and the rules are called GAAS, Generally Accepted Auditing Standard. For the government, the instead of the AICPA, we have GAO. Now remember, if it's a publicly traded company, they follow the PCAOB, which is different. The GEO, and they're called GAS. And we're gonna see they're actually they're called GAS. Actually, they're called GAGAS. The standards are often called government accounting, government accepted, government auditing standard or GAGAS. So GAS, sometimes they're known by GAGAS. In case you heard GAGAS, generally accepted government auditing standard is the same thing as GAS. Okay. Now, we the, the rules are in a book called The Yellow Book. The reason it's called The Yellow Book because when it was issued initially, it, it has a yellow cover and it's still known by The yellow book, yellow, yellow book, okay? Because the cover of the book is yellow and this book existed since the 70s. There are many additions to it, but it's still a yellow book, okay? So the initial yellow book was similar to GAS and it's still similar to GAS, but it has been expanded to provide guidance standard for performance audit. So really, The Yellow Book... They said um, what initially uh, was similar to gas. It's uh, still similar to gas. So everything that you learn under generally accepted accounting standard, you don't throw it outside the window when you do a government audit. You still use the same rules, exact same rules. Plus, you have to do some compliance. Think about the government. The government is different than a private business. The private business is, uh, is there to, uh, to make a profit. Um, and the auditor is there to make sure that the numbers are being uh, reported appropriately so investors are comfortable with the financial statements. For government, the auditor is concerned with compliance with rules like regulation, contract provisions, grant provisions. So in addition to the regular audit, we have to, co to comply. We have to do a lot of compliance with laws and compliance with laws, compliance with contract. And this is the additions that the Yellow Book has in addition to the regular regular audit so the financial so the financial auditing standard of the yellow book are consistent here we go with the principle of the AICP auditing standard this is what I just said it's consistent basically the same but and also contain extensive additional guidance including the following now we're going to look at some main differences or guidance that the yellow book has that are kind of in addition to guess don't think it's different it's an addition one is materiality and significance, two is quality control, three is compliance auditing, and four is reporting. So we need to know what these are. Mate materiality and significance. Hopefully you remember what materiality is. The auditor will have to determine materiality for the company overall, and they'll have to determine the materiality for a specific account. What is materiality? So this is zero. And let's assume materiality. We set materiality at $10,000. What does $10,000 mean? If we set materiality at ten thousand dollars for an account, it means we can tolerate we can tolerate up to ten thousand dollars. This is the shortcut because materiality. I'll have to you know go to, to go to the materiality section and view materiality. Simply put, we can tolerate up to ten thousand dollars in misstatement without coming to the conclusion that the account is misstated. So so materiality is high. It means we can tolerate more mis more more errors. Why? 
many reasons. One, one, because we're sampling. Two, because maybe the account is not important in the grand scheme of things. So there are many reasons. Now, if we set materiality at, rather than 10, set materiality at 20,000, it means if we increase materiality, it means we tolerate more, we are willing to tolerate more mistakes without coming to the conclusion that the account is misstated. Now, on the other hand, if we reduce materiality to 1,000, it means we can only tolerate 1,000 worth of errors before coming to the conclusion that the account is misstated. What do you think government does? Do you think we lower materiality or we increase materiality? And the answer is we set low materiality, very close to zero. Why? Because the government, whose money is it? It's the people's money. So we want to make sure, because of the sensitivity of public, public accountability, mater, uh, um, uh, materiality is very low. So we set lower materiality because we are dealing with people's money. Basically, the government is the people's money. So one thing, materiality, we set it low. Um, when you do government auditing, you have to have certain quality control. Now, all firms, we talked about this quality control in another session where they have to make sure their employees are trained, um, as somebody is reviewing the work of the firm, somebody reviewing their paperwork, so on and so forth. Now, for if you are doing governmental auditing, you have to have specific quality control in addition to what you regu regularly have. So CPA must have appropriate system of internal control and participate in quality control review. Now, if you want to be part of the AI CPA, you have to participate in the quality control review. Also, CPAs, I am a CPA, and every two years, biannually, I have to get 80 credits of continuous professional education. Now, if I am involved in governmental auditing, of those 80, they have 24 of them must be governmental-related auditing. Why? Because they want to make sure that the auditor is familiar with the rules and regulation that the government undertake in their business so they can audit them. So those are basically quality control that you must have in case you are conducting a governmental audit. Compliance audit, this is important. As I told you, the government is is dealing with, is, is, uh, is more concerned with compliance, okay? So the auditor can only provide, still provide reasonable assurance of detecting material misstatement resulting from non-compliance. So remember, even though we are auditing for non-compliance, you are sampling, you may not be looking at everything, and even if you're looking at everything, you may still make mistakes. Therefore, you always say, it's we are providing reasonable assurance, not absolute assurance, with provisions of contract or grants agreement that have direct effect on the financial statement. Although you are providing compliance auditing, you still cannot make an absolute statement. Now, in addition to this compliance, you are still auditing the financial statement according to generally accepted accounting principle. So you are still doing the financial audit, but in addition to the financial audit, you have to do the compliance audit. So the financial audit still exists. That's in addition. Reporting, audit according to GAGIS. So you have to say you are reporting, you are reporting according to the government auditing standard. You have to talk about the scope of testing of compliance, withdrawals, regulation, and internal control. So you have to tell the users what type of testing you did for compliance with laws and regulation, and you have to prepare, and this is important, a separate compliance report. So in addition to the financial statement, this is where it differs. You have to tell the users, which are the citizens, um, the, maybe the federal government agency that, uh, that, that finance this government, that uh, uh, they are in compliance. They are in compliance. Now let's talk about something called the Single Audit Act of uh, 1984 or audit and reporting requirement under the Single Audit Act and the Office of Management and Budgeting, which is Circular A33. Now, the Single Audit Act started in 1984, okay? What is the purpose of the Single Audit Act? Prior to 1984, for example, let's talk about a county or a city or a, or a school district. Let's assume it's a school district, just to kind of... Let's assume this is a school district. This... Uh, or, or a community college. It doesn't matter. S some government entity. That government entity receive money from the Department of Education, um, Department of Health, uh, uh, Health and Human Services, HHS, and I don't know, Department of Justice. I don't know why would they do that, but Department of Justice. So they, they receive money from those departments, federal grants. Now back before 1984, each each department, each federal, each federal agency will do an audit to make sure that the school district or the community college or whatever government entity received the money is in compliance. What they find out, there's are multiple audits for, for the same entity. So the government said, let's have this single audit act of 1984. So simply put, rather than having multiple audit, 
the single audit act provide for a single coordinated audit to meet the audit requirement for all federal agencies and before it used to be called the program audit program audit means each federal agency will audit its own program okay and the what are the rules now th th those rules could change from year to year entities that receive more than 750,000 in federal funds are subject to a single audit now if you want a little bit more details about who's subject and who's not um i mean this this is a cutoff you can go to the governmental audit course and look at this but this is basically the idea is if you receive more than 750 and this number is constantly changing from year to year it could change but right now it's 750,000 then you are subject to the single audit so what is the single audit Remember, you have to do gas audit, which is gas audit to make sure your financial statements are in compliance. Then you have to do a GAGAS audit, which is basically kind of a compliance audit. Think of it as a compliance audit. Then if you receive money from the federal government, you have to do an SAA audit. But the SAA audit, you still do gas, you still do GAGAS. Then you have to do certain things for the SAA, which we're which going to see what they are in a moment. So this is what the SAA is, is doing all three, basically three levels. A private company would only do gas. So a private company, a private company would only conduct an audit according to gas and they'll have their financial statement audited. A government agency that doesn't receive federal funding, they will do gas and gagas. They will make sure that their financial statements are audited and they're in compliance with whatever they need to compliance with. A government agency that receives federal funding, they will have to do all three, basically three level of auditing. And this is where the SS SAA comes in so what are the audit requirement for the SAA the auditor should be should, the audit should be in accordance with GAGAS of course and GAGAS is part of gas so GAGAS is gas plus compliance this is what GAGAS is GAGAS is gas the regular audit plus the compliance the auditor must obtain an understanding of the internal control over over federal programs sufficient to support a low assessed lift of control low assessed rate of control risk for major program this is where it comes this is where it, this is specific to SAA now you have to understand the internal control over the federal program to do what? To support a low assessed level of control risk, to make sure that they are distributing the money properly, the money is going to the right place, so on and so forth. They have the controls to do so. The auditor to determ should determine whether the client has complied with laws, regulation, and the provision of the contract or grant agreement that might have a direct and material effect on each of its major program. Now we have to make sure we also issue a report to the federal government saying the government entity, whoever you gave money to, they are in compliance with laws and regulation. So notice now you have to be more specific, go into each program and make sure it's working properly. Okay. Now the, uh, now the OBM, the OMB, the Office of Management and Budget, on a regular basis what they do, they provide compliance supplement that contains relevant guidance uh, in one source to help auditor understand the federal programs audit objective procedures and compliance so basically what happened is this the office of management and budget on a regular basis what they do is they give you additional guidance to sh to help you audit those entities that receive money from the federal government okay so in addition it lists specific requirements for individual federal programs if you live if you receive if the government entity receive federal money they will they will look for specific things. So let's look at some examples of what they look for specifically. And they're, they're kind of, in a sense, common sense, but this is not a comprehensive list. First, they want to know whether the amount reported as expenditure were allowable services. So let's assume we gave you money for, uh, just to make it easy, for senior citizen, for the uh, for senior citizen with low income, for housing of senior citizen, housing of senior citizen. So the first thing you want to make sure, was the money spent for allowable services which is housing for senior citizen okay whether the record shows that those who receive services or benefit were eligible to receive them and the reason i i use housing for senior citizen because i did an audit with hud and hud it deals with um uh, 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 uh housing and urban development basically the federal government gives money to certain uh, to certain non-profit and the nonprofit are also under the SAA if they receive federal federal funding, and the nonprofit is supposed to house house in their building senior citizens with certain income. So what happens is here, here we have to make sure that the senior citizens who are receiving the service, who are getting the discount because the government is subsidizing part of their housing, are indeed they are eligible. For example, um, as auditors, we look at their tax return, we look at their bank statement to make sure that they. They qualify 
to live in those low housing, uh, 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 low priced housing. And whether matching requirement, if there's any matching, level of effort and earmarking limitation were met. What is matching, for example, the federal government pays a certain amount, the state and the local will come up with a certain amount. We want to make sure that the matching requirement is, is being met. And earmarking limitation were met. If there's any condition, all the conditions are being met. And this is not a complete list. There is other condition, but basically they all revolve around are we in compliance and, and, and the people who are receiving the benefit are indeed, they indeed qualify. Uh, the Single Audit Act, more about the Single Audit Act. Now, what do we need to report under the Single Audit Act? We have to report an opinion whether the financial statements are presented with GAAP. As I told you, the first level is GAAP. So the first level, we have to do a gas audit, just basically a regular gas audit to make sure it's in compliance with GAAP. Two, an opinion as whether the schedule of federal award is presented fairly in all material respect in relationship to the financial statement as a whole. Again, we want to make sure the expenditure, basically the expenditure schedule, whatever money we spent, are in compliance they are they are they are we we spent the money we're supposed to spend the money a report on internal control related to the financial statement and in major program we want to make sure that also that also exists in the saa a report on compliance with rules and regulation and provision of contract or grant agreement where non-compliance could have a material effect on the financial statement also a report on compliance and the schedule of finding and question cost if any so notice the SSA, SAA requires several reports because they want to make sure your financial statements are good, your internal control are good, you're in compliance with government auditing standard, you're in compliance with all the expenditure that you are supposed to dis distribute. And last but not least, the AICPA guidance for auditor. Two relevant sources are the AICPA audit guide, government auditing standard and the single audit, and the auditing standard compliance. Those are additional guidance that the AICPA provide to auditors to help them audit um, governmental entities that are subject to the SAA. And this is basically a, a short summary of governmental auditing standard and the SAA. If you have any questions, any comments, as I said at the beginning, you can go to my governmental auditing course. I go a little bit in details into what's considered a major program, non-major program. You don't need to know it for this course, just FYI. Uh, you can um, you can uh, learn about it over there. If you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. It's worth it. And if you have any questions, email me or see me in class.